Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Gilmar Esteves and uh, my partner is Philippe Pires. Now we make the presentation about the OrSec Brazilian SaaS Help the World. Uh, I'm a VP of security engineering, but uh, also in Zup at Zup Innovation, but also I'm a technical holy history in my whole life. I'm not a Bush vice president and uh, me and Philippe Pires are advocates of the open source project OrSec. Felipe. Yes, thank you, Gilmar. So my name is Felipe Pires. I'm a security research uh, at Sapporo. Sapporo is a company from Switzerland. It's a startup company, and I'm responsible for creating different attack modules for this specifically organization. And I'm advocate not only our SEC, but many different open source projects because I really believe that and I like that. And our SEC is an awesome project. It started in Brazil, by the way. And we would like to present to you more about this project and uh, would like to invite you to collaborate with us. Yes, and actually, we love the open source project because the open source helped the community and helped to improve the growth, the, the, the cybersecurity mindset in a small company. We know that a lot of small companies not have a budget for cybersecurity, and the open source is a way to improve and grow for your cybersecurity environment. About the OrSec, OrSec it's a source code analysis tool, and now also know as a static application security testing tools, and helping the source code or, or compiled version to offer the code to help find the security flaws. Uh, the OrSec can be added into your EDE. Such tools and can help detect the issues during the software development. Such tools feedback can save time to effort, especially we compare it to find vulnerability later in the development cycle. Normally, we use the OrSec before the code production in the pipeline in the EDE. The string features or the string part about the SAS, it scales well. Um, if possible, to run a lot of uh, PODs and make uh, a lot of uh, analysis in different language before the, the production. It's not a complete code. Normally, it's a raw code. And if possible, to identify the buffers overflow, SQL injection, and normally the ciphers, some codes, hard codes of uh, a password and login. Normally, the output helps developers to understand the highlight the problematic code by file name, location, line number, affect the code. Difficult um, to automate search to many types of security vulnerabilities. The SAS code needs to a lot of coders under the project to build uh, new forms or a new code to identify the new vulnerabilities or a new form of vulnerabilities. For example, authentication problems or business problems is so hard to identify. Insecure use of cryptography because we know, but um, the team developed a different cryptograph model, for example, noise, noise control or noise framework. It's so difficult to understand the cryptograph and help the developer um, make the co make better code. Normally, SAS tools are limited. It's only SAS, only static, not dynamic, and not runtime. But in the future, I believe the ORs uh, in grow for a, dy a dynamic analysis way. ORs. Or was born uh, of a, a need to run a SAS in more modern language. Normally, the big players in the market um, running in the established language and the Ruby, Python, Kotlin, and the, a new a new language is not possible to make the SAS analysis at three years ago when we started the OrSec project. We managed to create a product for the community and today's up support the open source solution and I'm a sponsor, official sponsor of the OrSec. Some features about the OrSec is very important. Analyze simultaneously 18 language with 20 different security tools to increase accuracy. 
search for the historical git by secrets and other content exposed and clarify that your analysis can be fully configurable um, with a CLI and a web manager or pipeline. And now, Felipe, make a presentation on live coding with us. Yeah, thank you, Gumar. Thank you. So let me share my screen here. And uh, one second, please, everyone. So I will share my screen here to explain in more technically. So what about this auto sec? So uh, I think you can see my screen here. So here is the web page from our sec, our sec .io. This is the website. And basically, I have here my GitHub, Philippiris86. Uh, you have a specific repository here below called rsec demo So I'm using this, basically this folder in this demonstration here. So you can find me here if you'd like to test yourself, okay? So let's return here to the main page. So here you can see more information. You have here the GitHub from rsec and here the documentations. And not only that, but here you have the forum. So basically it's the place that you can find in the community and the RSEC team answered for your question, your doubts, okay? And you just click here in documentation and we can see here in another tab. And I will share here how you can install. It's, for, it's very simple like this. So I click here in CLI and after that installation. And I'm, we have a three ways or actually not three, but four ways to install. Locally, manually, install it by Docker and using pipeline as uh, Gilmar mentioned, right? So we don't have a time to explain all those details, but I will try to explain here in a simple way using, for example, by curl using here in my virtual machine. So I have here a simple uh, folders, as I mentioned it with you in the beginning. So specifically folder that I have here, some codes vulnerable. So basically I will pass here this specifically line of code and I will use curl to call this binary and set here the bash to install the latest version. Okay, so I click enter here. And after that, we will see the installation of the latest version. And after that, I will download the binary. I need to set here the password because I don't have a privilege to use it. It's important for the security stuff, by the way. The last version, as you can see here, and we have installed the binary. Not only that, but we moved to the specifically local binary place. Okay, so I can Philip. check here for a sec. Philip? Yep. Let, let's clarify this part because we explain uh, a local installation. Local installation is not remote, not web or Docker. Uh, we use the yeah. Mac and Linux command with a local installation. Yeah, you can use it here, not uh, exactly good. Uh, you can use in Mac or Linux. You can download using locally by Windows, and you have here other version to using manually. So, and not only in this way, but you can see here other um, other ways to install, like a Docker image. So it's another possibility. But if you can see here, we can call Docker, and you can install uh, yourself in your Docker in your container environment. Actually, okay, it's a different way. So I installed basically locally in my virtual machine. Because of that, I download these uh, different folders, as you can see here, okay, to test. So I install here our sec, and after that, I can set some comments. So basically, I, if I don't know how I can use in here, I can set help to understand how whatever tools work. But basically, you can see here some specific explanation. In the beginning, what is exactly our sec and the flags that you can use and comments. So basically, we have a specifically a commands to use like a completion, generate, help, start, and version. So version is basically the version to generate to see specifically uh, configurations. Completion is a, is a specifically scripted to see specifically uh, configurations of the shell, and they start to execute itself the RSEC. So basically, RSEC is start is the command to execute, and after that, you can using different flags. So let me put in here dash eight or dash dash help is the same to see difference common. So just a simple command to explain, like for example, um, dash H to help. And other interesting command is dash O, for example, because if you are thinking about Sonar Cube, for example, it's another project to looking for a, a quality quality uh, tools. 
but they haven't specifically uh, configurations about security, but our SEC is created by the security team. In this case, uh, the achievement is for more a different program language. And not only that, but can using both tools together. Because of that, you can set here the dash O to set up this specifically output format to analyze and to send those informations to directly to the um, a sonar cube. It's very interesting to use. Not only that, but you can set, for example, dash A, dash E, for example, if you if you'd like to use in uh, for a pipeline. Okay, so to see even specifically if your code is vulnerable. So if you receive this specifically, uh, return it to the code. For example, if it, the R stack finds some vulnerability, so you receive this code one, and you need to set this dash A. Okay, so nice. So let me execute R stack itself here in my local machine. I could put in, for example, uh, dash dash P is a path. Uh, if you'd like to set in specifically. Uh, repository on a specific project but in this case I will run in this specific repository as you can see here this is the path okay that I will execute our sec so can I proceed and yes and that's it okay click enter and that's it I will starting the scanning code another possibility to using our sec during this uh, scan here I will show you is to using on C a lot and on IDE or VS Code has um, Gilmar mentioned that. So let me go to the root here, my folder home or and our set, or I think it's demo, yeah, demo and our sec, yeah, I will share here. It's code, I will open here my VS Code to you and let's see here. Okay, so another possibility is to using our sec has an extension like a plugin okay so basically you go to here in next station right and you can put in here our sec simple like this and if you see we have here the specific extension to use in here so basically you need to install and that's it you can use in here like as you can see here okay our sec it's here in my vs code and after that i have here the same project the same folders just click in here and you can click in and start scanning the same action that you do that i'm doing actually in the cli here as you can see and i have a return here in the result i will execute here on id on vs code okay so starting here our sec started to analyze our code so if you see here our sec is working now okay so let me return here just to explain to you about the some specifically results about our sec. So if you see here, many results about this vulnerable codes and different projects that I have here. So if you see here, for example, let me explain two simple things. Basically, this one of those uh, line of codes vulnerable, for example, the language is JavaScript, severity is high. Take a look at this very interesting line and column that you can find the code. So if you're a developer, so it's very interesting because it, and now you know where is the place that you can find the vulnerability. And here is very interesting from my perspective because you have the security tools working to identify that. So as you can see here, this RSEC engine. Not only that, but you can, if you want, you can create this specifically engine. If you have a specifically program language, you can, you know, Create a pull request. You can working for this specifically or sec engine. From my perspective, it's very very interesting. So here it's another uh, interesting point about the confidence. So how it's uh, it's based on those three or four pillars of the cyber the security information. And here is the file exactly file that we can find the vulnerability. In this case, if you see here, this is the main project. Remember that. So home Tor demo and our sec demo. This is the main project. And here you can see many folders that the tools analyzing all those codes you have inside of your project. Okay. And here, as you can see, the type is vulnerability. And not only that, but if you are a developer, uh, if you don't know how the security works, you have here the information uh, about a specifically CWE, and it means the common weakness enumeration. So a specifically number of the vulnerability. Uh, related to specifically this uh, flow or this vulnerability. 
okay so you can click here basically copying or open linking in a web page and you can read more about that so if you return here in our IDE you can see here you can find this similar result right or actually not similar but the same so if you he see here so JavaScript it's another vulnerability using RSEC engine and if you see here here is the line vulnerable in this code so if you're a developer again you can manage it you can improve that you can you know make this uh, update of your code not only that but if you see here take a look other interesting thing so if you see here uh, it's the same case in a CLI you can see here the go sec as you can see here in in go sec yeah so it's another engine so because of that it's a, a different framework exactly take a look at this not only our sec engine but you have more than one engine inside of that because of that is so fantastic tools because you have many engines inside of the same platform and you can see these information so because of that it's pretty pretty cool nice so basically is this yes go 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 please uh, in the beginning uh, we developed the RSEC for a security tool but during the journey uh, we discovered it's more important and the other guys develop a lot of engine it's very important and so beautiful engines and we create a, a composable software to plug and play a lot of engines, mm -hmm. uh, for example, GoSec or the Sonar Cube, and another one, for example. Now we develop anything, uh, anything about the uh, Cloud Custodia uh, for the cloud, cloud. Yeah. Uh, it's not branch, but cloud surface detects and responds the cloud surface. But it's more important the the ORS now. It's a manager of a lot of engines, a lot of forms to identify. Yep. in your repository in your environment about the security flags exactly exactly good point Kimar. because it's that's the the point because we have a different program language and so we need to improve that so and you can help us to improve that about this specifically and to create more engines from our sec and the last but not important not uh, less important so as you can see here we have a possibility to working in a ci cd pipeline okay so if you work, for example, uh, as uh, using GitHub Actions, for example, so if you see here, basically, let me share with you here. So you can specifically, you, you could set, for example, the security pipeline name uh, using, you know, and it, executing a specific job and to run. Basically, the run automatically that you, you set is the same command that I use in CLI, if you remember, calling the curl and after that executing our sec dash p is a path remember that about your project okay and after that dash h remember when i explain about this specifically flag so you put here in this case true so if your code is vulnerable you create a specifically a uh, block gating or specifically gating to block to uh, analyze your code before to put in the production so not only GitHub Actions, but you can use it, for example, AWS Code Build, uh, Circle CI, Jenkins, and Azure DevOps Pipeline. And the web application has uh, Gilmar explained in the beginning. So it's very interesting for uh, to manage it. For example, different vulnerabilities and different for different teams. For example, if you have different teams, squads, trips, and depend on the name you no matter the name that you use, but you can see. For example, for each developer, what kind of program language is more vulnerable, which uh, project is more vulnerable, and you can manage it, for example. So you can set this in a different way. You can see here, for example, for total developers, repositories, and all vulnerabilities, program language, as I mentioned, it, it's very, very nice for managing in, vulnerabilities. In my opinion, in my opinion, the web is a perfect tool for the CTOs and CISOs because yep. we have a lot of information and uh, it, uh, after this information it's possible to start a, a better threat modeling and understand you need to make some training with your devs or need change the language change the version because uh, it's possible we use the version and the version is compromised it's very important to analyze the numbers understand uh, your case 
and take the decision, the better decision. It's, uh, it's a, a, a tool for help your team. Exactly, exactly. I completely agree. And and the some uh, consulting services that I'm I've been working for the last years, and I'm using this specifically feature for managing all those things to specifically to make a training to the developers. It's very useful, very very useful. So basically, I think is this. So again, so we have here at the GitHub. So if you want to, you know, go to re GitHub. You know, setting your pull requests. So we work a lot in this project. You know, and for my side, it's uh, that's it. So if you have any questions, Yumar and the people, we are here to answer you. Thank you, guys. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you, Flip, for the help. And uh, see you the next presentation. Bye, bye, guys. See you. Bye, bye.